Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video looking at childhood, asking the question, is childhood disappearing? Sociologists are divided on the status of children in contemporary society. For some, such as Pilcher, childhood is a period of innocence, separate from the adult world. And this is evidenced through the growth of child-centred society and the development of distinct products, legislation and knowledge of children. However, for others, such as Neil Postman, they argue that childhood is effectively disappearing, with increased exposure to the adult world through technology and social pressures forcing children to become part of the adult world far sooner than in the past. This forms part of a key debate in the sociology of childhood, and in this video we're going to look at the view that some sociologists put forward that childhood is disappearing. There are a number of factors that influence the view that childhood is disappearing, and we will examine these in this video. Firstly, the decline of children's mental health in contemporary society, with some suggesting we are facing a crisis in children's mental health in the UK. We'll also look at social class differences in childhood experiences, adult control over children, the sexualisation of childhood, and toxic childhood. According to Womack, children in the UK are rated as being the unhappiest in the developing world, and there is lots of evidence to support this. According to the Children's Society, 1 in 10 children has a diagnosed mental health condition in the UK in 2018. This compared to other statistics that suggest that 1 in 3 adults will suffer a period of poor mental health in their lifetime may not seem like a large amount, but given the reluctance of medical professionals to place mental health diagnoses on young children, it is incredibly significant. The World Health Organization suggests that the rate is actually higher, estimating 20% or 1 in 5 adolescents will have mental health problems in any given year. With many mental health problems first occurring in adolescence, this indicates a growing problem for society as these children enter adulthood. Research from the Department for Education has found that girls are more likely than males to show signs of psychological distress, although other social factors such as male socialisation may account for the lower levels of boys reporting psychological distress as rates of male suicide are significantly higher in adulthood than those of females. Another factor influencing the disappearance of childhood is social class differences in childhood experience. While some argue that children are kept separate from adult concerns, issues such as deprivation are often difficult to hide from children. And with the Child Poverty Action Group suggesting there are 4.2 million children living in poverty, with an expectation of this increasing by a million over the next two years, this suggests that financial issues will impact on many children. The impacts of deprivation such as holiday hunger, period poverty, poor housing, homelessness and food bank usage mean that children are often forced to support their family, either financially or emotionally. Over 300,000 young people in the UK are registered as carers, providing unpaid support for a family member, with around 60,000 of those providing over 35 hours a week of care. This obviously impacts on their ability to experience a childhood separate from the concerns of the adult world. Deprivation also has impacts in schools, with around 17% of children stating they have been a victim of bullying, according to the Department for Education in 2019. One of the main reasons cited for being a victim of bullying was the deprivation of their family, demonstrating the impact of poverty on childhood experience. Rather than being separate from the adult world, children are increasingly controlled by adults. Gittins and Hood Williams have both suggested the existence of what is termed an age patriarchy, how children are controlled, particularly by adult males. Children are controlled through their time, the spaces they inhabit, their bodies and their appearance, and their access to resources. While some may suggest this is a form of keeping children separate from the adult world, the control over children's lives limits their freedom and independence and can impact on their resilience in the future, creating a generation of young people unable to function adequately in young adulthood. This has been further researched by Mile, who suggested that views of childhood as being separate from the adult world are typified by control of children by adults. Although recent changes such as the United Nations Convention on Rights of the Child have gone some way to examine the rights and freedoms that children should have. Another way childhood is said to be disappearing is through the sexualisation of children. 
Increasingly, companies are producing children's clothes with more adult themes, appealing to the parents buying the clothes rather than the children wearing them. Smaller versions of adult styles are commonplace, while clothes range for children often span from 3 years to 16 years without differentiating between the different stages of childhood. The growth of the internet has been cited as a reason for the decrease in average age of first sexual intercourse from 20 in the 1950s to 16 in 2001. And this demonstrates a change in attitudes to sexual exploration in relationships. Furthermore, claims of historical sexual abuse in the UK suggest that the exploitation of children has been a long-standing issue in society. This has led to increased legislation of who can be in contact with children through DBS checks. The seriousness that these allegations are given in contemporary society illustrates a change in our thinking about childhood. As previously, these claims were dismissed as being the invention of children's imaginations. A final factor that influences the disappearance of childhood is put forward by Sue Palmer, who suggests the emergence of toxic childhood syndrome. Increased isolation from parents through wraparound care, such as breakfast clubs and after school clubs, increased access to technology to keep children entertained, poor diets and conflicting parenting styles have negatively impacted on the experience of children. Palmer suggests that this has a cumulative effect on children and is responsible for an increase in mental health conditions and antisocial behaviours from children, who are lacking adult guidance in negotiating their emotions. Of course, we need to evaluate this side of the debate. Childhood experiences vary greatly based upon social class, gender and ethnicity, and therefore the experience of one child may not be the same as that of another. It's difficult to generalise childhood experiences with so many social factors impacting on the experience of childhood. Some sociologists have suggested that rather than disappearing, childhood is being extended into young adulthood. The lack of opportunities for the clipped wing generation and the increased cost of living and wage stagnation means that there exists a generation of boomerang children, those that return to the parental home after university or due to financial difficulties. Tosi and Grundy found that almost a quarter of young adults were still living with their parents, which is the highest percentage recorded in nearly 25 years. These arguments suggest that financial dependence at the very least is being extended beyond the traditional end of childhood, despite the sociological and psychological aspects of adulthood encroaching into childhood. That concludes this Truth to You Sociology topic video, looking at childhood and answering the question of is childhood disappearing? Thanks for watching.